I'm not a part of Death Row no more. I'm on No Limit Records right now, getting ready to be on Doggy Style Records, my own label, and I'm looking towards the future. The past is the past, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got enough footage and enough information and documents to let people know what's, what's happening with that. That's a part of my life that I really, you know, try to forget and try to move past, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you were in elementary school, you, you loved it to rem reminisce on it, but it's over with, you know what I'm saying? It's over with. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I know that already. Let's move on to algebra, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a new stage right now, a new, new level of the game, and death row it was fun while it lasted. It, what it, it was what it was, but it was more negative than positive, and right now I'm surrounding myself with positivity, so whenever I speak on death row, it brings back bad vibes, and I don't really like dwelling on it. The hip-hop world has been all about the new and young rappers lately, making waves with their trendy styles. But now the spotlight has swung back to the legends of the game. Suge Knight, even though he's in jail, has found a way to make headlines with his podcast, Collect Call with Suge Knight, a part of Dave May's Breakbeat Media. In this podcast, Knight shares stories from his life, especially the big, memorable moments. However, it's his episodes talking about Snoop Dogg that have really got people talking. I'm Dave Mays, and this is Collect Call with Suge Knight. What you're about to hear are conversations, raw and uncut, with the legendary founder of Death Row Records. He's currently serving a 28-year sentence in California State Prison. His honesty, vulnerability, and current state of mind will all be heard in this groundbreaking podcast series. Knight didn't hold back when he talked about Snoop, and his words left many listeners around the world pretty shocked. It started a lot of chatter with people suggesting that Knight is snitching on Snoop, trying to get him into legal trouble. With all this talk going around, Snoop felt he had to step up and say something about these claims that Knight is snitching on him and about his own past. So, let's get into this story. It's about how the old school is making a comeback in the face of the new, where long-kept secrets are coming out, and each new detail keeps you wanting to know more. First off, let's dive into the history between Knight and Snoop. This tale is a hefty chapter in the storybook of hip-hop, weaving together music, power struggles, and an unexpected ending of reconciliation after years of conflict. It begins in the early 90s, a golden era for rap music, with Death Row Records at the forefront of the West Coast rap scene. The key players in our story are Snoop Dogg, a fresh-faced rapper known for his laid-back flow and clever rhymes, and Knight, the formidable and often controversial head of Death Row. Snoop Dogg's journey with Death Row started when Dr. Dre, one of the top producers in the business saw something special in Snoop's relaxed rap style and insightful lyrics. This collaboration led to chart-topping hits that took the music industry by storm. Snoop's debut album, Doggy Style, broke records, catapulting him to fame. Meanwhile, Knight was the man behind the curtain at Death Row, ruling the label with an iron fist and a reputation that inspired both loyalty and fear. The relationship between Snoop and Knight was complex, to say the least. While Knight was instrumental in Snoop's climb to stardom, the negative publicity surrounding Death Row began to weigh heavily on Snoop. The situation reached a breaking point when Snoop faced murder charges, prompting him to reassess his life and his association with Death Row's darker aspects. The departure of Dr. Dre from Death Row signaled to Snoop that it was time for a change. Feeling alienated and concerned about his career, Snoop made the leap to No Limit Records, owned by Master P. This move represented a fresh start for Snoop, away from Knight's shadow. I'm not a part of Death Row no more. I'm on No Limit Records right now, getting ready to be on Doggy Style Records, my own label, and I'm looking towards the future. The past is the past, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got enough footage and enough information and documents to let people know what's, what's happening with that. That's a part of my life that I really, you know, try to forget and try to move past, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you were in elementary school, you, you loved it to rem reminisce on it, but it's over with, you know what I'm saying? It's over with. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I know that already. Let's move on to algebra, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a new stage right now, a new, new level of the game, and death row it was fun while it lasted. It, what it, it was what it was, but it was more negative than positive, and right now I'm surrounding myself with positivity, so whenever I speak on death row, it brings back bad vibes, and I don't really like dwelling on it. However, the transition wasn't smooth. Snoop released a track dissing Knight, highlighting the depth of their fallout. This phase of open hostility underscored the deterioration of their relationship, with Snoop criticizing Knight's management style. Despite their separate paths in the music industry, both continued to make their mark, Snoop evolving into a hip-hop icon and Knight facing legal challenges. It ain't about crip or blood, it's 
about you being jealous of what I've done. Surprisingly, despite their chaotic history, Snoop and Knight eventually found common ground. This reconciliation was more than just a personal milestone. It was a turning point in hip-hop culture, emphasizing the importance of forgiveness. Snoop's song, Bygones Be Bygones, encapsulates this sentiment, advocating for letting go of grudges and moving on in peace. This resolution marks a new chapter in their famous relationship, reminding us of the complexities and opportunities for personal growth and redemption in the rap game. Well, um, I mean, you still got a good relationship with him today? Me and Suge, cool as a mother. I'm cool with Suge, I'm cool with Master P, Dr. Dre, I'm cool with everybody. Yeah, I mean, how can you not be cool with Snoop? But I, I had to go get that cool with him. I had to go sit down with Suge. Sure. <laughs> But now, it looks like any common ground they once shared is gone, because Suge Knight has just called out and exposed Snoop Dogg. This latest development has reignited interest in the West Coast hip-hop scene, putting a spotlight back on the drama that once unfolded. Knight, the former head honcho of Death Row Records, has made some hefty claims on his show, Collect Call with Suge Knight, broadcasted by Dave May's Breakbeat Media. Knight claims he played a crucial role in keeping Snoop Dogg out of prison for life. This all dates back to 1993, when Snoop Dogg and his bodyguard were arrested in connection with the murder of Philip Little Smooth Woldemarium in Los Angeles. Knight shares how he was instrumental in developing a defense strategy that hinged on the type of bullets used, a tactic he believes was key to winning the case. But Knight's revelations don't end with a legal battle. He also disclosed that he shelled out $6 million to smooth over post-trial issues, including handling someone who was trying to blackmail Snoop Dogg. Knight explains that this involved engaging a private investigator and eliminating a potentially damaging tape. Now, for Snoop to say he and Michael Harris are doing something together as a team, that tells you a lot of, I'm disappointed in that mother because if you want for me, you'll still be in prison doing life. You turn around and you said you partners up with this dude, neither one of y'all got death row or bought death row or purchased death row. When, when Snoop got convicted for the murder... Snoop Doggy Dog. A judge in Los Angeles refused today to drop murder charges against him. We, the jury in a broken title action, find a defendant, Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. But the most important thing from Interscope and everyone else that was in the business told me do not waste a dollar on that. Snoop Dogg's bodyguard also weighed in during an interview with Cam Capone News, sharing his perspective on the confrontation that escalated, leading to him firing in self-defense. He aimed to injure, not kill, targeting the lower body, but tragically, the victim was hit in the hip and shoulder blade, leading to his death. The aftermath became more tangled when the victim's friends removed the weapon, complicating the police's investigation. Ultimately, Snoop Dogg and his bodyguard were acquitted of all charges, with their defense highlighting self-defense and pointing out errors by the Los Angeles Police Department. This trial has become a landmark in West Coast hip-hop history, embodying the intense intersection of music, fame, and the law. So he's backing up, he's like, oh man, no, he's just, he be tripping sometimes, man, we know you are, man, it's my fault, he's like, no, don't, I mean, hey, mom, I'm sorry. And all of a sudden, the bushes flutter, and you see somebody run out of the bushes, and it was Philip Wallamarian at the time. He runs, and he tries to, you know, he gets to his guy, his guy grabs him. He's like, man, no, 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 he pushes him away. But when he pushes, he lifts his shirt and he reaches. But soon, but when I saw him start to reach, that's when I took my gun and I fired. Now you have to remember now, like I told you, there was like a little incline. My hope, I wanted to hit him in the lower part of his body. So as I'm aiming, he's turning. And as I'm aiming here, I fire, pow, 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 pow. At the same time, it's exactly consistent with what I said. When he was turning, he got hit in the hip and in the shoulder blade. And unfortunately, the one that went through his hip went through his, you know, went through him and his shoulder. He takes off and he runs. We find out that when he ran, he dropped about, I don't know what they said, it was 50 yards or 75 yards away. He dropped right there. And that's unfortunately where he died, but his friends took the gun. Knight's recent comments throw light on his complex relationship with Snoop Dogg, underlining the ongoing saga around Death Row Records and its lasting impact. Whether Knight's accounts hold truth or not, they underscore the intricate dynamics of the hip-hop industry, where personal and professional lives frequently collide with significant consequences. And surprisingly, Snoop Dogg has been pretty quiet about all of this, which has got everyone talking and wondering what's going on. With Snoop not saying anything about the huge claims Knight made, it feels like there's a big silence hanging in the air, making people guess and come up with their own ideas. 
to keep things calm or he's waiting for the perfect time to speak up, especially if there are any legal details he needs to think about. But in a time when not saying anything can make people think even more, Snoop's silence is making folks wonder and guess even more about what's true. This lack of an answer from him could end up making people look at him differently, especially since he just made a big move by buying Death Row Records. The way Snoop is handling this, choosing whether to talk about Knight's claims or to keep silent is really interesting. It makes people even more more curious about what's really going on. Deciding to stay quiet could be a smart way to avoid making the drama bigger, or it might be a risky choice because it leaves everyone hanging, waiting to hear his side of the story. This whole situation brings back a lot of memories about the old days of West Coast hip hop, shining a light on the complicated and sometimes rocky relationships between the people who helped shape the music scene. By not jumping into the conversation, Snoop is walking a fine line. He's got to figure out the best way to deal with these serious accusations without messing up his image or making things worse. It's a tough spot to be in because everyone is paying close attention to what he'll do next. So, what's next for Snoop Dogg in this whole situation? Everyone's trying to guess. Knight, who's in jail right now, has been saying some pretty big things about his past with Snoop Dogg. It seems like he might be trying to get attention or bring up old problems. Even though he's locked up, Knight's words are still causing a buzz. He's hinted he might have more to say, which could stir things up even more. If he shares more, it might cause trouble for Snoop if what he says turns out to be true. There's also a chance Snoop could decide to speak up, but if he does, it could make the whole situation explode all over again. Fighting back might get even more people interested, and it might not be a good look for him. It could also make people pay more attention to Knight's claims, which Snoop probably doesn't want. The thought of Knight sharing more from jail is something that could really shake things up. If he does, Snoop might have to defend himself to keep his reputation clean. This could get messy with legal battles and a lot of media talk, bringing up old stories from their past. This whole thing between Snoop Dogg and Knight isn't just their personal drama, it's a big part of music history. What they do next could change how we see them, and remember the music and stories from their time. Everyone's watching to see what will happen next, ready for more twists and turns in the story of these two big names in hip-hop. What do you think is going to happen? Will Knight keep talking about Snoop Dogg? Will Snoop respond to Knight's claims? Could this lead to Snoop having legal problems? Let's wait and see how it all plays out.